Now, the government has renewed pledges to level up the country by unveiling new plans to raise educational standards and outcomes across low-performing areas in England. 95% of the areas that have been identified for intensive support are outside London and the South East and will include Rochdale, the Isle of Wight, Hartlepool, Walsall, Knowlesley, Bury, Leeds, Luton, Norfolk and Sunderland. As well, education experts from the Education Policy Institute want schools to be judged on a wider range of measures than just GCSE results. Well, here to talk to us more about it is Chris McGovern from the Campaign for Real Education, which campaigns for higher standards and more parental choice in education. Do you support these measures? Well, of course, I support any measure which might improve things, but I think We've got a situation here where there's a small step forward, but you have to look at the last sort of 20, 30 years. I mean, I've taught for 35 years, and what we've seen in the UK, uh, in England in particular, but also Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, is basically a relative decline. We're falling well behind other countries around the world. We're sort of mid-table now. And I've listened this morning to union bosses uh, in the education world, and they say, no, we just need more money. Well, I would say to them, look, since the 1950s uh, until, about nine, until about 2010, we increased expenditure on education by nine times in real terms. Yes, it's fallen back a bit recently, but it's not about the money because we can look at countries around the world which spend far less than we do and achieve far more. We spend a lot of money on education amongst, amongst the big spenders. So, look, I welcome what the government are doing because anything in the, any step in the right direction is, is a good move. But we've got a long, long way to go to catch up with where we were perhaps 30, 40 years ago. We've got a lot to do. Now, I wanted to ask you about this um, practice of off-rolling, because this is what the, one of the, the things that they talked about. Uh, so can you just explain what that is and, and how it is sort of impacted uh, the way the schools uh, were able to sort of report on their results? Well, you know, schools uh, want to get good exam results. If they've got pupils who are perhaps not making good progress or are dis disruptive, they will perhaps exclude them, so then they're off the roll. Or, and actually this happens quite a lot in the independent sector, though it's never reported and it's a story for an investigative journalist. What some schools do, if they are um, if they're independent or if they're even their academies, they enter those children as uh, private candidates so they don't appear in the official figure. So there's someone's onto a story here because actually there's quite a lot of this going on under the radar. So if a school has a problem with the child, they either exclude them or they put them in as a private candidate. And what someone needs to get onto this and look at freedom information requests and so forth, because schools can improve their exam results by removing candidates who are likely to fail. But look, on the other side of that coin, there are schools who exclude children because they're causing damage to other children. We can't have you know, two or three percent of disruptive kids destroying the education for nine to seven percent. So it's not a straightforward and simple matter. But if you want to improve your exam results, some head teachers know enter children as private candidates or exclude them altogether. Then you can boost your scores and you look good on the Ofsted league table. So mm. it's going on. It needs to be looked at. Mm. Uh, government figures published last year showed that 200,000 pupils, one in five 11-year-olds, were moving to secondary school without being able to read the, expe the, the standard expected of them, which is really shocking. I mean, what measures can we actually implement and wh where's the role of parents in all of this because the schools can only do so much can't they yeah it's no shock to me of course because i was saying that 35 years ago and uh, then we stopped t teaching children to read in what we would say is a traditional way which is using phonics using the sounds of the letters we're coming back to that now but for about three decades uh, and, and even today to some extent children weren't taught to read in a matter in a way that works so they called it real books in those days what it actually meant was that children were told to look at the word look at the shape of a word and to remember it so they might look at the word hippopotamus and they could read it but they couldn't read his has or hers because they couldn't decode that the, the, the phonics in those words so we had poor methods of teaching reading which have been pretty ingrained in teacher training colleges and we're still suffering from that so it's no surprise to me that a large number of children, over a third, are leaving primary school without the basics established in action, in reading and in literacy, but also in mathematics. Now you say, what about parents? Well, parents have got a huge role in this, but, but of course, I work with parents and I work with poor children in our community and the parents themselves can't read. So it's quite difficult to ask a parent who can't read, who's a victim of our education system, to teach their child to read. So we need an adult literacy program as well as a child literacy program. It is a big problem. 
And the, what's good about the present government, I'm not, I'm not you know, sounding a banging drum for them, but what's good is they're beginning to recognise we've got a problem. The exam results are through the roof. We've got the best exam results ever. And it's a lie. It's a great lie. And we're beginning to wake up perhaps to the fact we've got a lot of catching up to do. And it's not about money. It's much more to do with how we teach the children. And you're right to say, why are so many youngsters leaving primary school, about a third, and they're not at the basic levels of literacy? Those kids walk the green mile. No qualifications, no job, no future. And we've got to do something to help those children. Absolutely. Listen, Chris, thank you so much for your thoughts. That's Chris McGovern from the Campaign for Real Education, which campaigns for higher standards and more parental choice in education.